Scott Woodward with you to talk about uh, Friday night footy. We have two cracking games this week on the Friday night, and I think we'll probably be seeing the 2012 premiers go around on Friday night. Not quite sure who that will be, but one of the four teams playing on Friday night, I think, will just about win the grand final. Let's talk about the first game, a cracking game this between Seagulls and the Tigers played up at Gosford, so it's basically a neutral ground, although the Seagulls will be um, getting the home ground dressing shed, maybe a little bit uh, more heat in there to keep them warm. But um, uh, not a lot in this as far as the ground is concerned. Uh, both both teams have played there. It's 1-1. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure if the prices are right in this game. The Tigers have opened up uh, the short price favourites with the bookies. $1.77, the Seagulls two fifteen. Uh, I think it should almost be the other way around. And let me tell you why I think the Seagulls are entitled to be a little bit shorter. The market has reacted very strongly to Steve Matai and um, uh, also Glenn Stewart both being out. Um, Glenn Stewart is a massive out that uh, they showed um, in the semi-finals that Manly still go OK without Glenn Stewart. As good as he is, and he is their best forward, he is very replaceable. They won three games in a row to get into the grand final without Glenn Stewart. So there's no penny stations there. And one thing I noticed when he wasn't there, young D- Daly Cherry Evans, who everyone thought would suffer without Glenn Stewart, as is his minder, um, little Cherry Evans, he stepped up and he had a blinder without Glenn Stewart. And I, I don't see any reason why he won't do that again. He's a class act. I think um, certainly a world-class halfback. I expect him to go very well again. One of the reasons why uh, I can't be on the Tigers at these odds is a couple of reasons. Firstly, they played last Sunday in oppressive conditions. The humidity was enormous. Most of the players suffered with cramps and they've got a short back up here. Um, It won't be anything like that on Friday night. As a matter of fact, uh, it it, it could be windy and wet, but they have to recover. And it was game one. They won't be in good shape. They wouldn't have enjoyed training this week, I wouldn't think, the Tigers. The other thing is um, they've got yet another injury. Um, firstly, uh, they lost their fullback, um, and he's going to be replaced by a rookie fullback, and then they've lost their uh, international prop forward. And the, the two guys that they're filling this week, Matt Grote, um, it will be one of the one of the props, and Aaron Woods will be the other prop. Now they're two young kids who probably shouldn't be playing front row at this stage of their careers, um, and that's a big, big uh, question mark. Uh, where they're playing the Seagulls who have got two experienced props um, and, and not only um, have I got a big question mark particularly over Matt Great starting as a prop but who's going to replace them when they come off the bench it's a very skinny bench that the Tigers have got so uh, it's a double whammy there they have Tom Humble at fullback um, and I've got, I've got a high regard for Tom Humble uh, he's, he's got brilliant speed off the mark um, but I'd like to see him under a little bit of pressure see how he handles bombs and, and grubbers and things like that but Matt, Matt Grote, um, as one of the props, starting props, is a big problem for me. The other thing is the bench, where guys look like Junior, Junior Moores and Matt Bell coming off the bench, doesn't really excite me. So the coach will be counting on very big minutes from these established players like Adam Blair and Gareth Ellis and Chris Huntington. I would expect, uh, uh, no surprise from me here, if Adam Blair goes off and starts in the front row, um, so he can have a little bit of experience here in the front row against the very experienced um, Manly front row. The, uh, the last time these two teams played um, was in round 26, I think, last year, and uh, the West Tigers just beat Manly, but um, Manly missed 52 tackles in that game, most uncharacteristic for them, and they only had 45% of the ball, and yet they just got beat. Um, I would think with 50% of the ball and better defence, they would have been winning that game, and I don't think they'll be um, having a defensive effort like that. And one of the reasons why I think their defence will be better is uh, simply because uh, Matt is not playing. He's um, probably the worst defender in the team, and he's replaced by uh, young Dean Ware, and um, I've got a high regard from him. He's actually um, got uh, three tries in one game in first grade, uh, and he's got good speed, and he's a much better technically defender than what Matt is. So um, I don't think that's a big problem with Matt being out, despite the fact he's an international um, obviously, Glenn Stewart is going to be out now. Um, now uh, look, he will likely be replaced by, um, I would think, probably Rose, uh, maybe George Rose or, or young Daniel Harrison, who I've got a high regard for, um, can offload, um, and he's more of a second rower. So um, I would think that George Rose will probably come onto the bench, or Daniel Harrison is what I think will happen. Who's going to start? I'm not quite sure what he'll do there. Maybe Jamie Burrett will start, 
or maybe he might even start with uh, Darcy Lusick in the second row. Interesting to see. I know the coach um, knows those guys better than us, and I'm sure that um, he'll probably make the right decision. But look, both teams aren't at their best here, um, but I, I, I think given the outs, I think Manly are in better shape and have got more depth on their bench to cater for it. And the other thing is that they've got going for it is um, the good news is that Kieran Foran, who, who uh, was expected not to play at the start of the week, and my mail is that he's come good and he will play. And so to have him combining with uh, Daly Cherry Evans is a very, very big plus. Um, I had a concern about the West 6 and 7 last week. Benji Marshall was his typical Benji Marshall. does bring things but also does dumb things. Um, now, um, his combination with Tim Molson last week um, was basically non-existent. So I've got a question mark if Tim Molson is the long-term halfback for West Tigers. Um, I know they have a very good um, striker when he's been at, at halfback, but put it this way, he's not in the same class as Daly Cherry Evans and stars. An, an organiser, a, a tactical kicker, and even a defender is concerned, making line breaks. Uh, I think Daly has got it all over Tim Molson. So I think the Seagulls have got some measures there, and I don't think these two teams should be so far apart in the betting as what they are at the moment. So um, for me, I can only be on um, Manly at the odds, and that's what we'll be recommending to our members. Look, the other um, Queensland game we have on Friday night um, is the Broncos versus the Cowboys. Um, and I think both these teams have got fabulous lists. And uh, the Broncos um, didn't play well last week. They were our best bet of the weekend, but they still won very comfortably um, by two converted tries. And basically, uh, I assess them as being a 24-point better team on the night. In fact, they would have won by 30-plus had it been a dry ground. They played dry weather football on a wet track, which was just dumb. But uh, they'll probably get much better conditions um, at Suncorp Stadium. So they're coming back home and they're playing the Cowboys. And just have a quick look at these stats um, against the Cowboys. And they're, they're just overwhelming. Uh, Brisbane Broncos, uh, 24 wins. Queensland, North Queensland, 5. The last, last nine times these two teams have played, Brisbane have won 8, North Queensland 1. So you can see they love playing them. Um, and uh, you think uh, even on the stats they look good things. And if you want to look at last week's form, they're good things. I thought the Broncos, um, while they didn't play well last week, they were very impressive with some of the things they did, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But um, the Cowboys' um, effort against the Titans when they failed to score a point um, and their completion rate was the worst I've ever seen. It was just um, just disgraceful. Uh, I think the coach will be really struggling to hold his job if he turns out a team again like that. Um, the good thing about the Cowboys is they can only go better than what they went last week. I don't really like betting against teams coming off a, um, a career uh, worst performance, and that's what the Cowboys did last week, because there's normally that bounce back factor. But um, you'd have to think that they can only improve. They've got Jason um, Tamalolo um, is back on the bench, and he's their most promising young forward. Um, Corey Patterson is there, and also Faya Loa is also there. James Seguiaro, uh, I've got no idea why he wasn't there last week, um, but he, he, he comes back and he'll certainly make his presence felt. Aaron Payne didn't do a thing last week. I don't even know why he's there. James Seguiaro should be starting. Um, one of the big problems for the Cowboys is Brent Tate. Um, they really need his experience there and his defence into the centres. Uh, they were lost there um, on the right side in defence last week. Uh, Ashley Graham had a shocker, and Brent Tate coming into the centres will make a big difference. Um, but um, my mail is that he's in doubt and he still may not get over the table. Um, so uh, they will be counting on him playing. But, um, you know, look, if it wasn't for Jonathan Thurston being in this side, you'd say the Broncos will win by the length of the straight. But he's such a, a magical player, um, and his team and him on his own high um, standards, they all went ordinary last week. And you can only think that it'll be a much more competitive uh, Cowboys side this week. But having said that, I think the Broncos will be even better because, I, as I said, I don't think they played well last week and they won easy. So goodness knows what's going to happen when they play well. They get their most experienced player back this week. Uh, Petro Silvanosiva will come onto the bench um, and that will, that will give them a lot of experience and uh, that will be just perfect having a, a big guy like that coming in off the bench. One of the reasons why I really liked the Broncos this week, and I think they can actually go all the way and win the Premiership, is two things. I needed to see a couple of things from them. I needed to see um, their halfback, Peter Wallace, stand up um, after Darren Lockyer retiring. I needed to see a go-to man there, and I needed to see a general on the field. And I have no doubt that Peter Wallace is a significantly better player with Darren Lockyer not on the field. He was overshadowed by Lockyer, and he wasn't the same player. He just was a link man last week. 
last year, I should say. Um, last week, he was the general. He was calling for the ball. His tactical kicks were outstanding, and he got a try for the Broncos when they really needed the try. I thought he had an outstanding game, a real class number seven game, and uh, no wonder he's re-signed um, because uh, he should be there for many years if he keeps playing like that. And I needed to see him put in a performance like that for me to tick off a box and say they can go all the way because all the other players in the club are outstanding, but I needed to see the general, and we saw him last week. The other thing I needed to see was uh, the best player in their team, Justin Hodges. Uh, he's a world-class centre. I rate him equal with Greg Inglis. As a matter of fact, he does a lot of things that Inglis does, doesn't do. He certainly puts himself in the game more than what Inglis does in terms of um, his line breaks, times he runs with the ball, his dummy half runs, um, and his crunching tackles. He's just an absolute devastating player, and I've got no doubt that um, the Cowboys will struggle with him, just as the Parramatta Eels did last week. So to have a very fit um, Justin Hodges after a great off-season, providing he can stay fit and providing Peter Wallace can keep up that form, the rest of the, Cow uh, the, rest of the Broncos side um, is just a quality side. It's a, it's a significant bench. Uh, it's a great forward pack and the strike power all over the back line, all the way back um, from their, their six. Uh, I like the way that um, uh, the young number six went last week, Corey Norman. I like his long kicking game. Um, and he did some nice things. I can only see him getting, getting better. Um, and he's allowing Peter Wallace to call the shots. And if he keeps playing like that and keeps getting better, and with um, the, the two terrific centers that they've got and the good fullback that they've got, um, I think the Broncos are good things in this game. And uh, I can only be on the Broncos to win this game. So for me, um, I'm going for a Manly Broncos double on Friday night. Do my two things. Take the double. I think you'll click. Good luck. Talk to you soon. Cheers.